neurotic. Okay, so the goal here, guys, is for us to both get the correct answers written down, but also to study. So I would just say, uh, if you have not yet done textbook exercise number five, person watching at home, please don't watch this video. You're on your honor. Uh, watch this video after you do textbook exercise number five. All right. Number one says mountain, a natural object bigger than a hill. We did this one together, but that would be breaks rule number three. That is not, that's too broad or too narrow. Number two, wife, Adam's rib. That breaks two rules. Number one, that's not the essential attribute of wife. And number four, that is a figurative or metaphorical definition. Number three, brick, dried clay shaped into a brick. That's a circular definition. So that we would circle number two. For number four, rectangle, the shape of a typical textbook. Let me ask you this question. If I could wave a magic wand and make every single textbook to be a triangle, would it still be a textbook? Yes. yes. Okay. If that's just an accident of the shape. So we would circle number one for rectangle, the shape of a typical textbook. What are some essential attributes of a rectangle? Like what are things that if you change this, it's not a rectangle anymore. Give me one, Bale. Two, two pairs of parallel sides. If you don't have that, you don't have a rectangle. Okay, what else? What's another essential attribute, Anna? Yeah, four right angles. Degrees after 360. It's two dimensional. Two dimensional, has four sides, right? She said two pairs of parallel sides, has four, however you wanna phrase that. So the point is, if you changed any one of those things, you no longer have a rectangle. If I take one side away from a rectangle, what do I have? A triangle. Okay, so, so the point is, all of those things we listed are essential attributes of a rectangle. The fact that your textbook is the shape of a rectangle is not essential, okay? So do we understand that difference between essential and accidental? I'm gonna pause here for a question in case someone has it. Okay, all right, onward. Five, headache, when your head hurts, that breaks two rules, number three and number six. Uh, that is too broad. Sometimes your head hurts because, you know, if you're Wiley, Ke uh, Wiley Coyote, an anvil just fell on your head, okay? Also, that's the wrong part of speech. When your head hurts, that's the wrong part of speech. Number six, capitalists, a person who is not a socialist. Well, that breaks three rules. One, that's not the essential attribute of a capitalist. Two, that is way too broad of a definition. There's lots of people who aren't socialists and aren't capitalists. And then five, that is a stated negatively. Okay, any questions so far? I'm sure you guys all did great. Number seven, to hate how you feel when you don't like something. Well, one, that is way too broad of a definition and that is stated, it's the wrong part of speech, okay? So that's number three and number six. All right, carpet, floor covering, number three, that is too broad of a definition. That could also include rugs or things of that nature. Yeah, a mat. I'm standing on a mat, which is not a carpet. A bearskin rug, yeah. Okay, now notice here, notice here, number nine, it says to float, and then it defines it as to hover. And I'm saying that that makes two mistakes. One, it's circular. Two, it's too broad or too narrow. Now, that's too narrow of a definition, but what I really want to look at is the circular one. Now, the easy way to spot a circular definition is if it uses the word in the definition, right? But it doesn't do that. So why is this a circular definition? Vail? It's a synonym. Yeah. So if I don't know what it means to float, and then I say, hey, Vail, what's it mean to float? And you say to hover, I still don't know what it means to float. So when we define things, we need to give new information. Ask yourself, is this giving new information? So if I said to Vail, what does it mean to float or to float? And she said, uh, to jump off of the ground or think of to jump, right? I said, what does it mean to jump? And she said, to leap. That's a circular definition because I don't know what that means. But if I said, what's it mean to jump? And she said, to lift yourself off of the ground by means of your legs, both feet at the same time, right? Ah, now I know what it means to jump, okay? So to jump, that's a circular definition. Number 10, guys, it would make me so much happier if I could just break up the little David combination. So how about you just break yourself up and just leave out the commentary in between each answer, okay? All right, number 10, bag, a pliant repository. That's rule number four. That is unclear because that is the, 
client repository? Is that vague, ambiguous, or obscure? It's obscure. That's a word nobody knows. Two words that nobody knows. Number 11, large, something that is not small. That's rule number five, because that's negative, and that's rule number six, wrong part of speech. Okay? What kind of what part of speech is large? It's an adjective. Something that is not small is not an adjective. That's a noun phrase. Uh, life, a roller coaster that we all ride. Well, that's really touching and moving, but one, that's not the essential attribute, and two, that is a figurative definition that's a metaphor. Okay? So any questions for anything from numbers one through twelve? Hannah? I just kind of, I just didn't really know the terms very well, so I was like, well, it could be this, well, it could be this, mm -hmm. too. I was just kind of confused on this. Well, what I would tell you, Hannah, is, and, and maybe you did this, but I think this would be a good place to start, is just to go <coughs> one at a time. And it will take, like, the first six would take you longer, and then you would get faster. So if you just went to number, we did number one together. So if you did number two, and you're like, hey, wife, Adam's rib. Okay, rule number one is state the essential attributes of the term. Let me read over that again in my textbook. Okay, let me see. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's that one. Great. Let me go on to number two. Not be circular. Let me read over that section in my textbook. Okay, no, it's not that one. We're good. Uh, number three, not be too broad. Tonight. Let me read it, right? So you're doing that, and by the time you get to the fourth or fifth one, you actually know them, and then you'll speed up. Okay, so if you just look at this and you never open your book or you never open your notes and you're just like staring, hoping that somehow like the right answers will float off the page. I'm not saying you did that, but that's really not going to yield fruit. But if you'll just go one at a time, then that's how we'll get better at this. So when you have your quiz, when you have your homework tonight and you have your quiz tomorrow, that's the process is to just go one rule at a time. Okay, does it break rule number one? Does it break rule number two? Does it break rule number three? Does it break rule number four? And that's not super fun, and that's not like very fast, but that is the very thorough and very precise way of doing this. Read. Well, we have to do like what rules, like, are we going to flip it, like rules that it's like using or whatever? No, no, it's, we just only identify the rules that's breaking for this particular assignment. Any other questions? This comes with practice, okay? We'll get better. All right, numbers 13 through 18 will go pretty quickly. There's lots of right answers here, but I want you to write down these right answers. Okay, for dinner, we did this one together. The, ge the genus of dinner is meal. Another species under dinner or alongside dinner would be lunch, and then a type of dinner would be banquet, okay? For number 14, uh, this genus of moon would be satellite. Satellites aren't just metal man-made objects. It's anything that orbits something. So that's a satellite. Another species of satellite would be an artificial satellite, like a communications or television satellite. And then a specific type of moon would be Luna, which is the name of Earth's moon, which I did not know until last semester when I did this. So what's that? No, it is a moon. That's what it is, the name. It's like you are a boy, but your name is Reed. It is a moon, but its name is Luna. Uh, then 15, I hope we all said timepiece. I hope we've talked enough about watches in this class where timepiece is what came to mind, but timepiece, wristwatch, pocket watch, Rolex watch. What are some other genuses? What are some other genuses you could have put besides pocket watch? Or other species, I should say. Fail? Uh, species? Yeah, other species uh, on line B. What else could you have put? What are other types of timepieces, Jackson? Clock. Clock, okay. I can't really think of any right now off the top of my head besides clock wristwatch and pocket watch, but stopwatch maybe. Uh, number 16, gave you bed, pretty simple there. We probably did something like furniture, table, water bed. You could have done bunk bed, twin bed, queen size bed, king bed, whatever. Uh, but furniture is a great genus there. For species, you could have put table, chair, uh, couch, so on and so forth, desk. Waterbed. Okay, now the two verbs I think are pretty interesting. Uh, to teach. So these all need to be infinitive verbs. When you teach, the genus of teaching is giving. You're giving someone something. Another species of give is to feed. Like when you feed your dog or when you feed a baby, right? You're giving them something. You're giving them food. And then a type of teaching is to lecture, right? When you, when you lecture, you're teaching. 
What are some other types of teaching? To what? Right. Well, that would be what I would assign you to do. Yeah. To inform. To explain. To explain. Okay, so I can lecture, I can explain, I can test, I can quiz, I can grade, I can discipline. All those are types of teaching. Okay, so there's any number of things there. To pray, pray is a type of talking. And then another type of talking would be to coo. Like, you know, when you have like a little baby, like a little trick or two, you're, just, you're so cute, yes, you are. All right, that's cooing. And then to intercede. So that really what we should have done for 18 is what do you do when you pray? You praise. You request, you confess, you think, right? So all of those would have been fine. Now, if you did a good job on those, then 19 through 24 was a piece of cake. Let me put those up there for you. Uh, remember, the idea here was that you use the genus that you yourself chose in your definition for 19 through 24. So if you picked meal as the genus of dinner, meal should have been in your definition on 19. So dinner, the main meal of the day, Moon, a natural satellite. Wristwatch, a timepiece worn on the wrist. Bed, furniture designed for sleeping on. To teach, to give knowledge, to pray, to talk to God. Okay, So what makes prayer different than any other type of talking? In prayer, I'm talking to God. In other types of talking, I'm talking to people or myself. Okay? So any questions about this entire assignment? How you were supposed to do it or how you did it, David? Uh, whatever. Um, so on that, some time work we did like a couple of weeks ago, the one where we got points off for like putting types of cars. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. For examples, wouldn't that be the same as putting Rolex in type of car? I think so. And so I would disagree with the book on that, but the book's smarter than me. So if you put Rolex, that'd be fine. All right, any other questions? I thought the same thing, David, when I was grading it. Because I thought it was a little inconsistent. Any other questions? Hannah? If you put instead of Rolex Apple Watch, is that okay? Yeah, of course. That's great. That's type of wristwatch. Bean? Uh, would you say like prayer is like a form of communication and it can be on the same level as to talk? So your genius was to communicate? Yeah. And then you said to pray, and then for B, you put to talk. Yeah. Again, what I'm really looking for, David, is consistency. Okay, so if your big idea was communication, and then you put to pray and to talk, and then what did you put for the species of to pray? Okay, but as long as you were consistent, that's fine. So this is not the only right answer. This is just a right answer, as long as you were consistent. Okay, any other questions? All right, so I'm going to exit out of this so as to not tempt... Anna Duncan, and I'm just going to put that up there because what, what, what else could be better to stare at while I explain something to you? So no matter how unhappy you are about homework, how can you be unhappy when you're looking at those beautiful children? So lesson five additional exercises. You'll have the rest of class today to work on this, which is about 15 minutes, I think. Yeah. 10 minutes. Okay. And this will be due tomorrow. This will be a great way for you to study for your quiz. That is tomorrow. So, uh, number one, what is the primary rule broken by each of the following definitions? Okay. Keyword here, primary. Some of these may break more than one, but you're looking for the most egregious, obvious one. So, for example, chair, a four-legged piece of furniture. What's wrong with that definition? So we would say that that is what? Too broad. Too broad. Bingo. Okay. Now you don't do not write the number because I don't know that you know what the numbers mean. I want you to write out. You don't have to write out the whole rule, but for example, for number one, you'd write out too broad, okay, or too narrow, or circular, or not essential. However, you got to do it. All right. So this gives you chair, chess, chick, salad, to shake, to think, variety, wood. Okay. Any questions about number one? You're identifying the primary error. All right, number two, write proper genus and difference definitions for the following terms. Term number one, chair. What is the genus of chair? Furniture. furniture. Okay, what's the difference between chair and every other type of furniture? Yes. Sit on it, okay? So if you define bed in your homework as a piece of furniture for you to sleep on, 
then you can just use your homework and just switch out the word bed and chair and sleep and sit. So you would say for number two, for chair, a piece of furniture that you sit on, okay? Any questions about number two? Just standard genus and difference definitions. All right, number three on the back. The following terms are negative. Write genus and difference definitions for each of them. And then it says, can you define them positively? Don't worry about that part. I just want you to give me a genus and difference definition for these negative terms. Absence, death, empty, ignorance, infinite, sin. So those, you will use negative words. You're going to say things like not or without or less, right? So that's okay on this one. Any questions about number three? Last but not least, for all of our Sound of Music friends out there, consider the song Do Re Mi from the movie Sound of Music. If the definitions given in the song were considered serious, which would be good definitions by genus and difference? Of those which are improper, which rules are broken? So number one, doe, a female deer. Is that a good definition? Yeah. Yes. So you can put good or fine or put a check mark, whatever you want to put, signifying that that is a good definition. Number two, ray. A drop of golden sun. What is the primary rule broken by Ray, a drop of golden sun? Sellers? Figurative. Bingo. Okay, so we see how we do that. All right, any questions? Any questions at all about genus and difference definitions, genus and species charts, errors, rules? Yes. Yes. You don't, get, you don't have to write the whole thing. You can say figurative or narrow or broad but don't just write the number okay if it's right just put a check mark or put good or fine or whatever you want to put david i don't but i have some pencils here if you like to use them any other questions before i hit stop wilder yes yes mm -hmm. just like the last quiz okay all right, you have the rest of the class to work on this. I'll pass it out in just one moment. Let me hit stop.